Hello and welcome. We're continuing to read through the book of Psalms, and today we find ourselves in Psalm chapter 21. This is a beautiful psalm written by David. It's a general psalm, general enough that all of us reading this psalm can recall times in our life when we are struggling in very similar ways, where we have trouble with people in this world. Ultimately, here, David is struggling at the hands of men who are seeking to do him harm. And he is looking upward. He's looking to the Lord for strength, for refuge, for vindication. He's trusting the Lord, that the Lord is good. So this is absolutely a psalm of lament, but it's a psalm written by someone who is faithful and who is holding tightly to the Lord. If we look at verse number two, verse two, uh, David says, incline your ear to me, rescue me quickly. And so his faith is that the Lord can do all things. The Lord has power to save, power to rescue quickly. He also says, be to me a rock of strength, a stronghold to save me. Now, this is very powerful words uh, coming from the psalm writer who is asking the Lord to do powerful things and to move on his behalf. And so his hope is clearly in the Lord. And that should be the way that we seek the Lord, that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Another verse I'd like to draw your attention to is verse number five. It says, into your hand, I commit my spirit. You have ransomed me, O Lord, God of truth. This takes us to the cross of Jesus Christ. These are the words that, cross, that, that Jesus uttered at the cross. O Lord, into your hands I commit my spirit. And we remember that Jesus was the one suffering unjustly, the ultimate sufferer who was suffering unjustly, and he was trusting in the Lord for his vindication. Another verse that stands out to me is in verse 7. And David is saying, I will rejoice and be glad in your loving kindness because you have seen my affliction. You have known the troubles of my soul. David knows that his God sees all of his suffering and he is rejoicing and glad. He says, I will rejoice and be glad in your loving kindness. So David's confidence is not in himself, but rather his confidence here is in the Lord's covenant promise that the Lord is faithful to his own people. And so he knows that there is going to be a time of rejoicing. There, there will be a time where he will lift up his heart to the Lord and sing and rejoice, even though he's suffering greatly. So if you have your Bibles open, why don't you turn with me to Psalm chapter 31. Let's read through this beautiful psalm together, contemplate its words, and let's meditate on these things. And then let's pray. Psalm 31, for the choir director, a psalm of David. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me quickly. Be to me a rock of strength, a stronghold to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. You will pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have ransomed me, O Lord, God of truth. I hate those who regard vain idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your loving kindness because you have seen my affliction. You have known the troubles of my soul and you have not given me over into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a large place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted away from grief, my soul and my body also, for my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. 
My strength has failed because of my iniquity, and my body has wasted away. Because of all my adversaries, I have become a reproach, especially to my neighbors, and an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel, for I have heard the slander of many. Terror is on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they schemed to take away my life. But as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. Save me in your loving kindness. Let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I call upon you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in Sheol. Let the lying lips be mute, which speak arrogantly against the righteous with pride and contempt. How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you, which you have wrought for those who take refuge in you before the sons of men. You hide them in the secret place of your presence from the conspiracies of man. You keep them secretly in a shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has made marvelous his loving kindness to me in a besieged city. As for me, I said in my alarm, I am cut off from before your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my supplications when I cried to you. O oh, love the Lord, all you his godly ones. The Lord preserves the faithful and fully recompenses the proud doer. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. This is a beautiful psalm. It reminds me so much of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verses 18 uh, through 24. If you read through those verses, maybe take note of that, look at that section when we're done here. But Jesus Christ gives us an example to follow in his footsteps. Though he was reviled, uh, though he was slandered, he was mocked, he was, he was uh, lied uh, up, up, about uh, to others, and, and all the suffering that he went through was unjust suffering. He gave us an example to follow in his steps, and that he didn't return the reviling. He uttered no threats, but he continually entrusted himself to the one who judges righteously, and he bore our sins on the cross. And you see, suffering in that way is what we've been called to as Christians. We suffer for doing what is right. And so keep that in mind as we pray through this beautiful psalm together in Psalm chapter 31. Let's pray. Lord God, we, we thank you, Lord, that in you we take our refuge. In your righteousness, Lord, you deliver us. As David says, incline your ear to me, rescue me quickly, be a rock of strength, a stronghold to save me, Lord. Indeed, you are our stronghold. You are our rock. Father, in your loving kindness, you will lead us, Lord, according to your goodness, Lord, for your holy name's sake. You lead your people and you lead them to where you are. Father, we thank you that you see us. You have seen us in our time of need, seen us in our time of affliction. You see the trouble, Lord, that all of your children, Lord, have endured. And you will strengthen us, Lord, and we will rejoice and have joy in your loving kindness that, Father, that you will not abandon us to the grave. Father, we thank you, Lord, that as Jesus said, into your hand, I commit my spirit. You have ransomed me, O Lord, God of truth. We thank you for the cross of Christ. We thank you that he finished the work for us. And Lord, he gave us a beautiful example to follow when we are reviled. Lord, when we are slandered, when people lie about us, Lord. Uh, Father, when they seek to do us harm, Lord, when we have done no wrong. Father, suffering unjustly is very difficult. 
But Father, Jesus Christ did so, so that we could have forgiveness of sins. And Lord, I pray that you would strengthen us. I pray for any listening in, for anyone at Sovereign Grace who is suffering, Lord, uh, by the hand of man, for doing what is right. And Lord, feeling the burden of that circumstance, that you would undergird them, that you, Father, would point them to Christ, the high priest who's able to sympathize with them. And Lord, they, they would seek you and receive grace and aid in that time of their trouble. Lord, David says confidently, but as for me, I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Lord, indeed, you are the sovereign God. And Lord, for all who have placed their hope and trust in Christ, Lord, we can say you are my God, personally appropriating the kingdom of God by trusting in the Lord Jesus, by going to him, coming to him and believing upon him and fully trusting in the work of his cross. Lord, indeed, you are our God. And Lord, you will deliver us. Lord, our time is in your hand. You are sovereign. Lord, you do all your holy will. And Father, you help us in all of our time of need. Lord, we can rest knowing that you are at the helm. That, Lord, that you are navigating for us. And Father, that, Lord, our responsibility is to seek to glorify you in whatever circumstance we find ourselves in. David says, how great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you which you have wrought for those who take refuge in you before the sons of men. Lord, your goodness is indeed great. And Lord, you store up your goodness. You, you store up sound judgment for the upright, Lord. Wisdom and counsel, Lord, for those that are in need. You are the God that leads us and never lets us go. Father, we just thank you so much. And Lord, as David ends this psalm, Lord, we pray. Lord, oh, love the Lord, all you his godly ones. The Lord preserves the faithful and fully recompenses the proud doer. Lord, you preserve the faithful. Lord, may we be faithful to you. Lord, no matter what the pressure is of our circumstances, our current circumstances, Lord, may we be faithful to you, Lord, because, Father, you preserve the faithful. And Lord, there will be a day when you will recompense those who are proud in heart. Lord, you say vengeance is mine, you will repay. We trust that, Lord. And Lord, let us pray for our enemies, Lord. Be strong, finally, he says, let your heart take courage, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, help us to be strong and to be courageous at heart. Lord, those who have placed their hope in the Lord. Our trust is anchored in Christ who is the one that is in authority over all. Lord, may we have courage because we are connected to him. We are in him forever through faith. Lord, we thank you that you see us in our time of need. And I just pray for the church, Lord. I pray that you would help the people of God, Lord, to trust in you, to seek after you like David in the Psalms, uh, to, to contemplate his words, to think of his prayers, to write down, uh, Lord, his, his songs of praise to you, even laments, Lord, that he carefully sought you and he knows you. And Lord, as we read the Psalms, we, we get to know you more. And so, Lord, I just pray that as we read and pray through the Psalms, you would teach us who you are, Lord. Help us to know you and to walk in you always. And Lord, that we would love you more and love one another more. Lord, we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Well, thank you for taking this time uh, in God's word. I know that this was a little bit of a lengthy uh, psalm, and, uh, but it's well worth it. Uh, I pray that you just continue to read and study God's word. God bless you.